What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 overview. So this is something that has been requested. I talk about quite a bit here, and that is the new PS4 Syscon tools by Abcarino and EGYCNQ. And this is all about making the revert process easier for the PS4 so that you can revert your console from a higher firmware down to a lower firmware. And uh, there's quite, quite a bit of confusion I've seen about this. So I wanted to kind of set the record straight on this as well as just kind of go over why this is an important development here. So there's two major downsides or two major hurdles to get over when it comes to reverting the PS4, and that is cost and complexity. So if we take a step back here to kind of understand this better, if we take a look back six months ago, I made a full guide basically showing the entire process of reverting the PS4, where I basically took a console that was on a jailbreakable firmware right here, as you can see, and I updated it to the latest firmware to access PSN. So you can see me there on uh, Black Ops 3 in an online match, 10.01. So I updated to 10.01, which was the latest firmware at the time. And I was able to, you know, play online. I was able to access the PSN store and all of that good stuff right here. And then what I did after that is I reverted the console from that higher firmware back down to 6.72 once more, as you can see right over here. So that was the whole process. So it was quite complicated back then because what you had to do was you had to back up data from your console before you updated to the higher firmware. You'd have to back up the S flash, which is the a backup of the NOR chip that's on your PS4 motherboard. You also had to back up the firmware for the Syscon chip that's also on your PS4 motherboard, as well as a backup image of your PS4's hard drive. And then from there, you could update to a higher firmware and then use that backed up data to restore it onto those chips. And then you'd be able to revert back down to the firmware you were on when you took the backup. And that was how the process worked back then. It was a very complicated process because it also included things like with the Syscon chip, you weren't able to actually write directly to the Syscon chip. You could only back up the data from it, which meant when it came to actually reverting the console, you would have to get a new blank version of the same type of chip, which could be quite hard to find and then you'd have to write the data onto that blank chip instead of the original chip and then swap the chips out, which would involve removing it from the motherboard. So these are some things that definitely added a lot of complexity and cost to this whole process. So since then, there has been quite a few developments to try and make this process easier. So firstly, the first big development is the fact that you no longer need to take a backup if you're just trying to revert your firmware to the last firmware that the console had installed the previously installed firmware. And the reason why you don't need to take a backup for that specifically, it's still recommended to take a backup if you can. You know, if you're on an older firmware, you can take a backup and then that way, no matter how many times you update in the future, you can always revert back to that backup, especially if you're on something like 9.50 or 9.60, you can backup data on it now. Then you can update to the latest firmware to enjoy the uh, PSN and all of that stuff. And then you can always revert back down to say 9.60, or whatever firmware you were on when you took the backup once a jailbreak comes out for that firmware. So there are some advantages to taking a backup. But if you've already updated and you haven't taken a backup, then you can still revert because basically there's two firmwares installed on your PS4 at the same time. There's kind of two partitions or two slots for the firmware and you've got an active slot and an inactive slot. So whenever you install a new firmware update on the PS4, the firmware update, the new one that you're installing, gets installed into the inactive slot, not the one that's currently being used. And then once it's fully installed, that inactive slot will become the active slot. So the previously installed firmware that you had that was active will no longer be active. So that means generally there's always the previously installed firmware in the inactive slot. So what was discovered is that what you can do instead of taking a backup if you've already updated to a higher firmware, is you can back up the data from your NOR flash and your Syscon chip, and then you can basically patch that using BWE's NOR validator software, I believe. Uh, it has the option to actually swap out the slots, so you can basically change which slot is the active slot. So you can basically take the slot that has the older firmware in it and make that one the active slot, but you'll be able to actually get back onto that older firmware, the previously installed firmware that you had. And that's the big advantage there. And it's still not, you know, necessarily guaranteed that that's going to work because for one, you'll only ever be able to revert to the previously installed firmware. Whatever's in that inactive slot is the only firmware you'll be able to revert back to. You will not be able to go any further, you know, lower firmware. So if you've updated like from 
to 9.60, then 9.00 will still be in your inactive slot. So if you switch the slots over, you'll be able to boot back into 9.00 and get your PS4 jailbroken from 9.60. But if you got to 9.60 through multiple updates, if you went from 9.00 to 9.03, and then from 9.03 to 9.60, then you'll only be able to revert back to 9.03. Only the previously installed firmware is what you can revert to, unless of course you have taken a backup when you were on an older firmware. So that's basically how it works there, but that definitely you know, reduces complexity and it means that people who haven't taken a backup still have an option to revert to an older firmware. Uh, there is also another caveat where if you've reinstalled the firmware in safe mode at some point uh, because you had some kind of problem, then that will probably have overwritten the, the firmware on the inactive slot to make it the same firmware that you have in the active slot. So you can have the same firmware version in both slots in that case, uh, which isn't great. So as long as you haven't reinstalled the same system software that you're currently on in safe mode, then you should have an older firmware in your inactive slot. So that's one big development right there. The other big development is no longer requiring that blank chip to write the backup syscon to and swapping the chips out. It turns out that BWE basically came up with a method or a tool that's able to actually write to the original syscon, the original syscon that's already on the PS4 motherboard. That way you can read and write to that. So you can back the data up from it and then write the backup back to the original chip. So you no longer need to source one of those blank chips in order to do the revert, which again reduces cost and complexity. He also came up with a method that would allow you to read and write to the Syscon chip without physically removing the chip from the motherboard, which was something you had to do before, where you have to physically remove that chip and put it back on. And doing that maybe a few times, it's definitely a risky process. So being able to read and write to the chip without removing it from the board, still a risky process, um, but should generally be a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, again, reduces the complexity. But the only problem with that is that BWE's software and his uh, hardware, in this case, it was the Syscon writer uh, that he has here that he was selling that would allow you to actually read and write to the original Syscon chip without having to replace it with a blank one and being able to do it in circuit without removing the chip from the motherboard. Again, it costs quite a bit and he's recently reduced his prices due to this new release. But generally, it was pretty expensive. Plus, you also had to pair it with his NOR validator software, which also costs quite a bit as well. So when you combine the cost of the NOR validator and the original cost here of the Syscon writer, it ended up costing more than it would to just buy a new PS4. So you could probably source a PS4 that was going to be on a jailbreakable firmware for a cheaper price than buying this equipment to try and revert your own console. Uh, which basically made it not viable for people to actually try this. But that's where things change here because with this new PS4 Syscon tool that can read and write to your Syscon, it is completely free. You do not have to pay for you know, BWE's own writer. All you need is a Teensy 2.0++ or 4.0 with a 100 to 200 ohm resistor and you can basically create your own Syscon reader and writer and I believe you can also use that to read and write to the the NOR chip as well, a Teensy 2.0++ or 4.0. So with that, with that one chip, basically, you can read and write to your Syscon and to your NOR flash, uh, which will be much, much cheaper than paying for, you know, the Syscon writer from BWE. Now, right now, I think you'll still need the NOR validator in order to swap the slots uh, to revert to the inactive slot. Uh, unless hopefully we get a tool, a free tool that might be able to allow us to do that. I believe you can use uh, BWE's tool once for free, but then you have to pay for the license and it's only a lifetime license that you can buy, uh, which is obviously pretty expensive. So maybe if we get some free software that can swap out the core OS slots, and then you can use an older version of BWE's NOR validator. There was an older free version a while back that you could use to just validate the NOR. And then that would overall reduce the cost to make it much more affordable and a lot less complex because we don't have to swap out the chip, the Syscon chip. We can maybe read and write to it in circuit uh, without having to remove the original chip. And again, that will overall make this whole process a hell of a lot easier. But again, there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to revert back to 9.00. Unless you're on 9.03, then I would definitely consider this because generally you update from 9.00 to 9.03. Therefore, you're very likely to have 9.00 in your inactive slot. So you can just swap the slots over using the revert method and get your 9.03 console back down to 9.00, 
so that you can use the jailbreak. Um, but again, if you've updated multiple times, if you've gone from, you know, 9.00 to 9.60 to 10.01 to 10.50, then you're only going to be able to go back to 10.01 or whatever the previously installed firmware was unless you have taken a backup. So this method isn't going to, you know, solve everybody's problems, but it may help some people get down to a jailbreakable firmware on their PS4s and or even just get down to an older firmware so that you have more chance of a, a jailbreak actually coming out for your firmware if you're on an older firmware like if you can revert from 10.50 to 9.60 or something like that uh, then you know you're more likely to get a jailbreak than you are if you were on 10.50. Now this release isn't without some controversy. BWE has been very critical about this and uh, obviously there's a lot of people who think that well you know he's not making as much money anymore because now there's a free alternative to his tools. However, you know, he has come out and warned about apparently this software bricking consoles. Maybe the developers will come out and dismiss this if it is a rumor. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what the developers come out and, uh, and say about that. But uh, yeah, hopefully if they can get, you know, bugs ironed out and get it all working, we'll have a free alternative to reading and writing the syscon. Really cheap. All you need is a Teensy 2.0 plus plus or 4.0. Uh, and it will just make things a lot more accessible for being able to revert your own PS4 firmware. So anyway, hopefully that kind of covers everything there. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.